Step one is to determine your investing approach. Some investors will choose to take a more active approach, while some investors will choose to take a more passive approach. Both of these definitely have the pros and cons that I do have a video coming out about. However, we're just gonna see which one you are in specific. So I'm going to give two statements and you're gonna choose which one resonates with you the best. Okay, so try this. Which of the following statements best describe you? Are you A, a very analytical person and you love looking at statistics, metrics, and you love doing mathematics? Or are you B, an absolute math hater and you don't wanna to have to do any homework? Do you A, have several hours a week to dedicate into stock market investing? Or are you B, simply a very busy professional and you don't have any time to dedicate into analyzing stocks? If you chose A on both of these, then you are most likely a active investor, which is things like day trading and swing trading. But if you are B, then you are definitely a passive investor and you might wanna consider long-term trading. Step two, you want to determine how you're going to invest in the stock market. We've got three options. We've got individual stocks, we've got index funds, and we have robo advisors. Individual stocks are exactly like how they sound. You just invest in an individual stock, which is a share in a company. Whereas for index funds, it can get a little bit confusing because it's actually a collection of a whole bunch of top stocks from top companies. So there's different index funds like the S&P 500 and Dow Jones. And when you invest in an index fund, you're investing in all of these companies and it's believed to be safer. Then we have Robo Advisors, which is a brokerage that actually invests on your behalf and just does all the work, but it's based on calculation. That is based on things like your age, your risk tolerance, and your investing goals. For beginners, I would recommend trying index funds because it is less risky and because you're investing in a whole bunch of different companies. If one company just absolutely tanked, then another company would also cover those losses. Plus, study shows that over time, the S&P 500 has had an annualized return on investment of 10%, meaning that if you invest $100 in the S&P 500, in one year you would make $10 extra. And this can actually produce substantial wealth over time. Then once you get into the groove of things with an index fund and you kind of understand the logistics of how to use your brokerage or how to trade in general, then you can move on and graduate onto individual stocks. Step number three, you want to determine how much money you want to put into the stock market. But that being said, we want to talk about the money that you shouldn't be putting into the stock market. You do not want to be allocating retirement fund money, emergency fund money, or money you've been saving up for a down payment on a home into the stock market, okay? If you need that money that you're putting in in the next five years, then just don't bother investing at all because the stock market is very volatile and we don't know where that money is going to be in two, three years. And if you need that money, it's not a guarantee that you're going to have all of it back or it's not even a guarantee that you're going to have any returns on it. As for investable money, there are two different rules that I live by. So a good ballpark is taking 110 and subtracting your age and you get the percentage that you're gonna invest into stocks. So for example, if you're 18, you're gonna take 110 minus 18, which is 92%, which is how much of your portfolio or your investment portfolio is going to be in stocks. The older you get, the less amount of money you want in stocks because your risk tolerance is gonna to be lower. However, you wanna be investing in other things like real estate, things that are more considered stable. Or you can just go with rule number two, which is the 7-20-10 rule or the 50-30-20 rule, whichever one works. But I personally just like the 7-20-10 rule. So basically 70% goes into real estate, 20% into stocks, 10% into things like mutual funds or crypto and GICs. However, because right now we're obviously teens, we do not have any money for real estate. So that 70-20-10 rule is something you can consider for the future when you actually have a home. Step four, you're going to want to choose your brokerage. So there's two options. You can either choose a standard brokerage account or you can choose to use an IRA, which is an individual retirement account, and you can invest through that. And there's definitely benefits because the money you take out can actually be tax free. But if you want it to be more liquid and more accessible, then I would recommend you use your standard brokerage account. And you want to consider all the different brokerage apps because not only do they have different fees and commissions, but a lot of the features are really different. Like some of them might have tax loss harvesting, some of them might have candle charts. It depends on your comfort level. And there's also apps that are made for beginners. And then once you're used to that, then you can always graduate and change platforms. And you can move on to something with more difficult features as you progress. Step number five, choose your stocks. For individual stocks, I would recommend that you only invest in companies that you actually believe in or you actually understand. 
You don't wanna hop on trendy stocks or things that you don't necessarily understand because it's not gonna work out for you and invest in a plethora of companies. So if one actually bankrupts, the other ones will keep you afloat. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe as I post finance videos every single week. Make sure you guys educate yourselves and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.